We've had to relook at what is actually a publisher because there should be no limit because the same rules apply. Whether you are a normal news and content provider, whether you're an e commerce site, a listing site, or a brand, brands are investing, they're becoming publishers themselves. So, brands like Woolworths, for instance, are becoming, plat are becoming media themselves. So, we use different platforms and we're starting to to hire our own editorial teams to deliver the content on our sites because we take it that seriously. So we use editorial content to build up our proposition. It's no longer just left to the media owners we knew it in the past. So somebody said that we're in the age of the mart martini media where media needs to be available to access any time, any place and how users choose. So what does this mean for publishers? What to take into consideration is a wider audience. Are we reaching a new or the same audience? I think so many people app, 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 and I'm like, well, hmm, how many of my customers are on app? Do we have a mobile site? No. Okay, so let's reprioritize. Do our clients actually need it? Do you actually need it? Is it reaching a wider audience? Is it the same audience that you're reaching elsewhere? If it is, great. If not, reconsider. Cost versus revenue. Cost of building these things is, is expensive. What is the revenue going to be that you're going to make from this alternative form of publishing? And I'll come into that now. now. Technical capabilities, the word CMS. The reality is that we have CMS platforms, but we don't have the scale or the technology to build on that. Design and usability. You see people investing a lot of time and money into, into social media, and all they do is invest into maybe just the content or maybe just the design. But you have to remember that all of those platforms are extensions of your brand. So you might have a beautiful website which is with an amazing back end, you focused on optimization, your usability is incredible. Then you go and build a Twitter page and behind it you smash your logo a million times over like a wallpaper. So that by the time people get to it, they're like, oh, okay, so I know I'm here, that's not very impressive. All of these things count. You can't say because Twitter is a free application that the same rules don't apply, or Facebook. Content adaptation. But we're talking here about, we spend so much time working out our content to advertising ratios on the web. Since when did that not apply to mobile, or apps, or tablets, or any device? It's the same rules apply. Interaction and integration. An unknown brand went and built a beautiful Moby site. Amazing. Nice big branding, big colors, looked incredible. Invested a lot of money. And when you got there, all you could do was read about their product. But you couldn't actually buy the service, or book the service, or buy the product. So what was the point of that? So when you go and invest the money, make sure you deliver it. Don't just be there to be there. Be there to make it count. And research. Do the real research. Everyone's mattering on about smartphones, smartphones, and smartphones, like we've got to have an app. We don't have a mobile site, we've got to have an app. Let's not forget the 21 million people on Nokia. We're building for a very small portion when you build for smartphones. If that is your audience, great, but don't just be there to be there. Do your research, understand your customer, and make sure you deliver to that. So how does multi-platform publishing actually add value? So we've got two opportunities, and one stems from its other, it works in a circle. So we get, we, we're given an opportunity to provide more and improved access to content. Economies of scale, greater scope. We can extend cross content across more windows for a longer period of time, and we can capture people at all points in their day. That's the great stuff. But here comes the key to making it work and to benefit from the real opportunity. It's the engagement. The return path means that we can understand and cater for consumers. We know what they're doing, we can engage, we can measure engagement. It enables you to form a better, better relationship with your customer, whether it's a client, a customer, a reader, a user, it makes no difference. We're all publishers in some regard, so you all have clients trying to read that content. If we don't go to engagement, it means that publishers in their old form, so news and content providers, are left to make money based on the unique browser ad impression. And what happens? We're basing our lives on CPM rates that mean nothing. So this is the importance and why multi-platform publishing is beyond just sticking it around. So does multi-platform publishing mean multiple costs? Well, let's look at it. This is the reality of the South African market. The number of publishers since 2001 to 2011 has grown by 500%. The online ad spend in South Africa, that's the graph below. So we went from 2001, where we took 0.3%, to now where we take 2%. We took 2% in 2010, we took 2% in 2011. There was no growth. So understand what you're looking at. The publishers are increasing, but the ad spend is not coming into digital. So how do we make money from making these new platforms? Well, we've got two things that we can try and tap into. Either we get a greater share of our ad spend from our friends because we have multiple platforms that are reaching a wider audience. So we're not necessarily growing the market, we're just spreading it thinner. Or we dip into the pockets of the traditional media and start creating digital forms of traditional content. And this is the part that excites me. 
we no longer talk about digital platforms as iPads, um, phones and web and things like that. We're now talking about digital signage, we're talking about TV. We're now tapping into that big other 98%, which is what's going to make us count. So what does it depend on? So, well, one, you've got to have the right quality and genre of content. Go back to the basics, spelling, grammar, and quality content still counts. The right consumer. Where is your consumer at what point and what time? And again, this applies to all publishers and over the right platform. So here's the reality of where, what money we've got to spend. So we're actually a one billion rand industry. Three years ago, 80% of what you saw of this pie was contributed by display advertising. It now makes up 33%. So search is taking 37% and the things that are circled in red are basically left for us publishers to utilize to grab that 500 million rand mark. That's it. That's for all of us. So we have to start looking beyond the model of display advertising and the basic things we're doing in subscription. But I think the importance here when you're considering a subscription model is to find the right combination of ad spend and subscription and understand that it is dependent on the device that you're delivering it on. It's not just dependent on, your, on the user. How is revenue going to be split for publishers in the next three years? So 39% will, will be dependent on advertising only. 21% will be dependent on advertising and other forms of advertising, but in the form of advertorials or whether they're leading into content or other forms of podcasts, things like that. Premium, where you have premium ad-free ad content and advertising content, and 22% on the paid-for model. This is where it's going. So subscriptions and advertising, here's some basic rules. Basically, smaller devices provide less content capability and more advertising capability. You've got a mobile phone, it's got one big ad and a little bit of content, so it increases the value of the advertising. Larger devices, you've got more content um, capabilities and less advertising capabilities with 10 ads. So share of voice starts getting diluted. So we need to play into those different things. So the emerging model looks something like this. But you can see basically where you need to move your ad spend and how you need to break up that proportion based on the device that you're publishing onto. So now you're not only just slapping content onto a new device, you're now providing different models to generate revenue across those devices. So. There are just a few basic rules for the subscription model. Make the content relevant. The content that I read on my mobile phone when I'm running from meeting to meeting is short form content. Well, what do you do at night when you've got your iPad in bed? We are reading long form content and you need to be able to make it relevant for the point in time of where your consumer is at. You need to know where they're consuming the content and you need to deliver it for that device. You need to separate the venture. You can't have it free here and pay for somewhere else for the same stuff. It's irritating. So when I went and bought my beautiful Vanity Fair subscription to excited about my magazine arriving and I love it and then realized that I could get it on my iPad for literally nothing, I was upset. Also, make it quality. No spin-offs. Spin-offs spin don't work. Um, spin-offs, I'm going to invest a million rand in my new website, but I know that I can get a movie site developed for 30,000 rand on the side. That's a big audience that you're busy chucking around, so don't spin it off for something cheap just to be there. And content is no longer the only king, but the content experience is what is coming into account more than that. People are loyal to content brands, not particular channels. They seek out the best consumption experience by choosing content specific to the platform they're using to consume it. And that's all they base it on. So not only must your content be adapted and quality and all of those things, you've got to make sure that the experience is seamless. I put down my phone, I pick up my iPad, and I continue where I left off. Get ahead of the curve, technology. We play with the world. The problem is, is that our clients and our brands are not playing with the world, so we need to extend that knowledge back. So they're looking for a convenient and interactive experience. Interaction is a key as well. We allow people to interact on the web, we allow people to interact on our mobiles, but when you, when you get to the tablets, all of a sudden there's no interaction. So make sure the rule continues. So the following device features and capabilities may have an effect on subscription and advertising revenue models. Share of voice, that's what I was talking about earlier. So you, you have different share of voice for advertisers and content on different devices. Location-based targeting. I know where you are, what you're doing, what time of the day, and we can target advertising to that person. The audience, the general population versus the active users. So you need to play into those early adopters and say, well, how are we going to use them to identify what the next move is? The content display areas, that's the long form versus short form. Mobility, share of voice, yes, but equal content value, maybe not. So, yes, we get a greater share of voice for our advertisers, but is the quality the same level? Is it equal content value? Functionality. When we build beautiful mobile sites, we need to build for the lowest common denominator. So, will people pay? Will people pay for content and tell you now you can charge one rand for an article that's really of value or insight information, and you'll get that subscription fee sorted?
all the things that we do, the digital platforms and the capabilities and all the stuff we do here is transforming the way that consumers experience advertising. And this is where we move into what is becoming our new media ecosystem. So how is that happening? Advertising used to be who can shout the loudest. Well, that's no longer what it's about. It's no longer an interruption. It's an experience geared towards ascertaining what customers want, when they want it, and where they want it. So the new market, marketing model doesn't shout. It listens and it learns. It's the three main players that are staying the same. So the consumers, the media owners, the publishers, and your marketers within the companies and the agencies themselves. So how did we used to look at our consumers? You had captive viewers that weren't really influenced. Um, they couldn't actually influence the brand back because you couldn't hear them. What are consumers doing now? So they're in control. They have multiple choices. Their media use is fragmented. We're not attached to one device. We're not attached to one brand. We are harder to find as consumers. Where are you? What are you doing? And we're commenting. Consumers comment. When we don't enjoy something, we're now vocal. But why? Because we have the platforms to do it. So if you don't enjoy something, that second, you tweet it. So we're kind of forcing brands to, to pay attention. And if you're that brand that's reacting, you're doing well. So what does this mean for marketers and agencies? We can't just kind of broadcast our message anymore. We actually got to engage with your consumer. You know, it's all about a relationship. It's like dating someone. You know, you screw up your, your partner, he's not coming back. It's pretty much the same for a brand. You need to view them as a partner in a relationship. You're accountable, you're responsible. And you need to continue courting. And a relationship goes two ways. It's a two-way street. So what does it mean for media owners? So publishers need to deliver content when, where, and how their audience is demanding it. One platform is not enough. Every time your customer responds, interacts, he's giving you or she's giving you a little bit of information about themselves. You need to take that information and use it and manipulate it, engage with them and deliver it back. So marketers and agencies are also evolving. Well, one, I think that this is becoming one thing. Many more ad platforms exist and marketers need precision in targeting and accounting for their ad spend. There needs to be responsibility. They need to adapt quickly to the speed of marketing execution has accelerated. We don't have time to waste. Digital is quick, it's fast. Shifting ad spend to the channels, both digital and non-digital. Don't feel forced to use it just because digital is the space to be. So advertising campaigns are about relevance, interactivity, and accountability. You need to be responsible. You need to provide the stats. You need to look at the stats. You need to use them. We have the tools available to us to measure beyond the clicks rate and understand how our campaigns are actually performing. And we all know that, but the message is not going back to the clients. So it is very important that you start becoming accountable for the things that we do. When you stand up and accept that award, make sure that you've made it count. So what does this actually mean and how do we, how do we look at things? It's all about the analytics now. Now, now, now. I'm tired of seeing a media plan come in way in advance. We're in digital so that you can move it. So when you see it that it's working on this platform and you're getting this recognition, move it. Go there, watch it, read those reports, look at your analytics, where are you converting, change the campaign. The other reality of the situation is that brands should not be totally dependent on their agencies to provide them with this information. They can also see it themselves. We have tools, we have analytics, we have it available. Clients need to put pressure on their agencies because if you don't drive your agency to tell you, they're not going to tell you. So there's a role to play for everybody. What about the publishers? Well, you're the ones with the customers and you're the ones with the audience that they try to reach. So the same rules apply. Analytics and understanding your audience and the consumer behavior and where they're reacting, only you have access to that information. You need to provide people with that information. Agencies are dependent on the publishers to bring it to them. So, what, did publish, what were publishers in the past? We basically used to run around talking to their readers, one, maybe two if you were lucky, platform. Now we publishers are building and engaging with our audience, we're encouraging feedback, we're providing insights to create competitive advantage, distinguishing the media properties from the glut of other options for advertisers, and delivering integrated campaigns for their advertisers. Okay, this is what I'm talking about publishers do, they don't do this yet. They need to be doing it. The world is evolving and this is changing and this is why publishers are becoming everything. So, Marketers, they need to put context on par with content and the distribution of messages. Timing, relevance, context, it's becoming as important as the creative execution. So what does this mean to agencies? We need to react in real time. We need to move. We need to be transparent. We need to do it continually. You don't, you don't plan a campaign, put it up and wait and hope, and hope it works. You need to be on it all the time. So what is our ecosystem about in 2011? I think it's about collaboration. It's about bringing those three parties together. And we have to work together to make sure that we're getting value out of what we do. And in the center of it all, it will always remain the case, is the customer. And they are always at the center of your universe. So it's important to remember that. Thank <laughs> you.